Hey guys, Mr. Heo here. All right, so we are on chapter three, lesson 3.2 and weather patterns. Um, why have recent um, rainstorms in Gale Town been so severe? Chapter three's question is why did the most recent storm in Gale Town have the greatest amount of rain? Just to kind of root you back, there were four storms that we collected data for. Um, storm one was before the lake was put in. Storm two, or th two and three, um, let us know that um, warmer weather accounts for why um, we can have more severe rain. But then when we looked at storm four, we saw that while it was hot, it was not as hot as um, storm number three. And so now we're trying to figure out like, what was it with that last storm? So with our key concepts, all right, from our last lesson, we learned that air moving from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure is wind. Um, and then air parcels can be pushed up into the troposphere by wind. So what we're going to be looking at today um, is we're going to look at weather data from several storms um, around the world to figure out is severe rainfall and each storm was caused by a change in temperature, water vapor, or wind. Um, you'll also learn about how scientists think about the sources, where they get their data um, before deciding if they actually want to use and trust that data. All right, guys, so let's get started with our warm up. So below are descriptions of two different groups or sources that collected data about births. We're going to read both sources and then answer the questions below. So source number one was a blog written by a hiking club where members regularly report the number of different birds they see. And source two is an article in a science journal where biologists report observations they collect about birds during a research study. So sources one and two are both groups of people who collected data about birds and then published their data. Which of these sources do you think would be able to give better advice? I'm sorry, evidence. Why do you think that? So we're looking at these two different um, evidence sources. One is people who enjoy birds. Um, and um, I'm sorry, a hiking club where club um, the number of different birds they see. And then the other is a science journal. Offhand, you're probably thinking that um, source two is the better um, source because it's in a science journal, it's by biologists, um, and they record observations they collected um, during, during their research story. And we got to think about source number one. Why is source number one not as strong as source number two? So um, there are good things about source number one, that it is a regularly um, report. Um, they are counting the numbers that they see. Um, then, um, but we also have to think about um, which one could be better. Um, a hiking club could mistake birds. Um, they could not not on purpose, not to be mean, um, just miscount um, things that um, the scientists um, could potentially have seen better, mostly because scientists design their experiments to um, capture only one piece of data or one variable, um, and they put a lot of like bounds on what they do. And if you think about like what we do in the simulation where we keep things the same um, so that we can know for sure what it is that caused um, things to happen within the simulation. So source two tends to be the better um, source because um, it's with the research study and it was published in a science journal. Um, So yeah, let's move on to evaluating some sources. 